The era of Trump has come to an end. And while we are not naive to think that having coloured or religious people in high positions somehow lessens the government's failings against the particular group, the Conservative Party is a great example of using brown faces to legitimise their nonsense to coloured folk. However, Trump didn't even go as far as that. His anti-Islamic sentiment was clear with his retweeting of far-right hate groups and people like Britain's First and Katie Hopkins, also not forgetting his implementation of the Muslim ban. So during all this, we never saw a Muslim woman with a hijab speak at the White House in a prominent position, nor did we ever expect it to happen, frankly. However, with the new president, Mr. Biden, uh, whilst uh, coming across the White House press briefing on the 24th of this month, you know, uh, as you do, uh, guess who I came across? Yes, that's right, a hijabi muslima. This is Samira Fazili, who is the deputy director of the National Economic Council for the current president of the United States. Before that, she was a clinical lecturer at Yale Law School and if that's not impressive enough, she is a graduate of both Yale and Harvard. I thought I would just uh, slide that bit in there. So Fazili has opposed the Indian government's revocation of the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. In other words, the atrocious nonsense that they're doing in Kashmir. So clearly she will not be viewed as favourably by the Indians who currently have beef with Rihanna and Greta Thunberg for speaking against their malignant and oppressive government. This isn't however what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, Whenever we're in any hardships, we are convinced it will last forever just like we thought the Trump era would last forever. So when we're going through our problems, our hope diminishes and our grief engulfs us. Allah of course tells us after hardship comes ease. And seen as he is the all-powerful creator of the billions of galaxies, the planets in their organized orbits, the ecosystems and the creatures that inhabit different habitats, the one who created the variety of the things that we know and we don't know, don't you think he has the power to solve your problem? Of course he does. But why isn't he? Because he wants you to reflect. There is something he wants you to learn from it. Yes, I know it's frustrating, it's annoying when you're in the midst of it, because that pain sometimes overwhelms your faculties of logic and reasoning. But sometimes you just have to you know, bear through it. And how do you do that? By asking Allah for strength. Yes, you ask Allah for strength. You speak and you communicate sometimes to a therapist, sometimes to your friends. Yeah, you surround yourself with positive and strong people. Yeah, you read books of strong individuals of the past who overcame their problems and obstacles and became great people. So take your moment of despair, view it as a learning experience and see how you grow. Problems have happened, are happening and will happen. You can't control that. What you can control is how you view them. Great people use hardships as fuel to drive them to be better, whilst the failures sabotage themselves by self-hate. Let's bear that in mind and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum.